Based on the type of office we have, it's going to start to make the minimum year. Do you understand here? I'm going to show you some things that the board really needs. I'd like to start with the state roof bathroom. Wow. This bathroom is used by the day in 1923. The Warren Harding is up again, and he told the day he'd like a bath. So he was trashed to the day just here, starting to fail, and then he died in August. So the day he kept this bath, and the next year, Al Smith, who was governor of New York, this is a good one. Al Smith, who was the governor of New York, had a fundraiser, and they were both a Democrat and a Catholic, so they bonded very well. So he in turn gave this bath to Al Smith, who gave it to the Hall of Fame. Isn't that a great story? That is a great story. Some other items I'd love to show you is that this is the vault that the Taft group, the first pick in 1910. President Taft was the first president to throw a ceremony with the first president. He threw from the seat, right? He threw from the seat, that's correct. He didn't go out to the plate. He did not. That's more modern. But starting in 1910, he was the first. He was a big Senators fan. Threw that to Walter Johnson, who gave it back to him. He inscribed the vault to Walter Johnson, and gave it back to him. And Walter donated it to the Hall of Fame. His family did not ask him. That's why. This is a very famous letter. It's called the Green Light Letter, written by Franklin Delano Roosevelt to Commissioner Landis, just after Pearl Harbor, asking if baseball should stay, should it keep going. And I honestly feel that it would be best for the country to keep baseball going. There will be fewer people unemployed, and everyone will work longer and harder than ever before. And that means that they ought to have a chance for recreation and for taking their minds off their work even more than before. Wise man, FDR. You've heard of Shoeless Joe Jackson? Yep. You know he's Shoeless? It's a, it's a little, little uh, touchy subject for White Sox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> understand? Yeah. He's Shoeless because here are shoes. So those are shoes that he wore, obviously different from shoes he had. He had small feet. He had small feet, and he could hit. He could have to hit third all time in that. And it is tough to understand. This is a glove used by the great Joe DiMaggio. He wow. was born in 1951. Which you can see that the way he was a little different. Still, he became the great center fielder he was. He's in the world like that. Joe DiMaggio's club. These are all World Series rings that have been presented to teams over the year. I thought I could start by showing you one that's probably meaningful to you. Yeah. Oh, it fits. <laughs> <laughs> and that's surprising. Right now, we're in an exhibit called Pride and Passion, the African-American baseball experience. And this talks about African-Americans in the game up to and through integration with Jackie Robinson. What's important to realize here is that it took 13 years for baseball to integrate, but they were you know, seven years ahead of Brown versus the Board of Education, right. 16 ahead of Martin Luther King's well, March. They helped, you know, Jackie Robinson helped uh, make Brown possible. Absolutely. Yeah. And in those first 13 years, Mr. President, you had nine rookies of the year that came out of the Negro Leagues. Andre, I don't know if you knew that. Nine most valuable player awards, including Campy three times, Ernie Banks twice. And what it shows you is just how quickly the game uh, became so much better with its integration. That's we know the 42 is now completely retired since Mariano Rivera finally hung up. This is the Dodgers uh, retiring of his jersey in 1972. They were the first team to do so. 25 years later, uh, Commissioner Seelig mandated that all 42 be retired. Uh, it's an important milestone in baseball history. You see some great uh, remembrances of the World Series, the World Series win. You know, Scott was said that he didn't remember the whole season. It's the game winner. It was a big one. The big one, Jeff Long, Freddie Garcia from the clinching game in game four. There's been 23 games in uh, perfect games in the history of baseball, two of them by White Sox. Got Philip Humber, who did it a couple years ago. That's his, his limit. And then Dwayne Wise used that glove to make a miraculous catch off of Mark Burley. Uh, for Mark Burley. For this, this perfect game? This perfect game, so. White Sox have a lot of history. Um, that's the look like a Cubs. That's all right. All right. Got to have, got to have a little Cubs history here. <laughs> you want to talk about anything in here, Ron? How about Yosh? One of the best equipment managers ever. And he's, For 65 uh, years. Yeah. He's, he's in Arizona now to retire at home. That's great. Great new for me. It's fantastic. Excellent. So we'll head this way. All right. Take a little bit more work.